Hi, I'm here now with Sal Kelly, who's got some interesting perspectives of the UFO phenomena. And first of all, let's find out a little bit more about Sal. Sal, what got you involved with all this? I mean, you're a musician, a composer, you've got some nationally uh, distributed tapes and things like that. Um, how did that bring you into the UFO experience? Well, uh, it's an interesting story. Back in the 70s, I became involved with a group known as Solar Cross, which was involved in telepathic communication with extraterrestrials. Um, at the time that I joined the group, I just simply had an open mind. I was sort of scientifically oriented, not particularly religious or spiritual. Um, and it sounded a lot like science fiction to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, But being curious, I decided to investigate further. And uh, one night after several weeks of going to these classes where they would uh, disseminate information that had been allegedly uh, telepathically received, I had an experience of my own where I had energy come rushing through my body and a tremendous amount of knowledge and information was transferred to me. And um, some of the books I had read and some of the psychic experiences I'd had up to that time, um, I kind of put the pieces together and realized that I was, you know, being communicated to by uh, some form of higher intelligence. Okay. Now, what kind of uh, messages or information did you receive in these telepathic communications? Well, a lot of it was what I would call quantized, which meant that a lot of information was packed into a short amount of time, and, and it would come, in a sense, in a coded format, but basically it was just like, like a having... a double-density floppy disk, huh? <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. It was a lot like having a lot of information um, where I suddenly knew things that I hadn't known before. A lot of it was about, you know, the state of the world, things that are going to be coming in the years to come, uh, a lot about tremendous cha earth changes, um, changes in, in society and political economic structure. Um, and then a lot around, around the spiritual aspects of life, the, the, the idea that we are much larger than simply this three-dimensional form with our mind and emotions and body, but that we have all these other layers and dimensions of ourselves which are very expansive and which go out uh, in a very uh, infinite way. Um, and it kind of like got me going. Mm -hmm. It was like an eye-opener, one, one of many experiences that sort of opened my eyes to the fact that this, this little picture of life that, that most of us are so caught up in our day-to-day -day routine was just that, a little tiny fragment of a larger picture. Speaking of day-to-day -day routines, what's the practical applications of what you're learning, of what you... Well, I think in? as you've probably seen from a lot of the speakers at this expo, um, there are a lot of very practical applications in that um, one of them is technology. Uh, I was the moderator for the technology panel yesterday, and, and we had a variety of viewpoints on how new technologies are going to shape the future of humanity. Um, my telepathic communication with extraterrestrials has um, been largely um, designed around, you know, what is the humanity of the future going to look like right. and what kind of technologies are going to carry us into the 21st century. Um, I think we all know that the internal combustion engine, nuclear, oil, coal, gas uh, are uh, damaging the Earth's environment uh, irreparably and so we uh, obviously we're going to have to find new sources of energy if we want to keep going as a species. So this right. is obviously one very practical application of some of the information that I've received. Um, a lot of the information has to do with electromagnetic energy sources, uh, ways of uh, using superconductors um, and different forms of consciousness expansion to create um, new forms of transportation, new energy power sources, um, a lot of these things which have been known for some time in, in some circles but have never really been available to the general public. Right, it generally takes about like 15, 20 years for technologies that are developed in the military to reach a commercial application. Correct. So it stands to reason that if these things that have been around for a while from what we've heard so far, that the technologies would be reaching that level Mm -hmm. and the consumer, let's say, the average person would begin to find out more about it, or at least those who have a propensity for mm -hmm. wanting to know. Another practical area is in the area of healing arts. Um, a lot of us, I've been involved in the holistic health movement for the last 15 years. Um, I mentioned my, my music it creates right. a healing effect on the listener. Um, and I've also been involved in many of the alternative therapies, such as rebirthing and some of these. Do you use this with contactees? Uh, well, that's what, sort of the way I was trying to draw together here, the, um, a lot of the information that I received from um, 
from ET sources, as I call them, mm -hmm. has been around um, healing and around and health. And you know, what are the root causes of illness? Um, you know, what is the larger picture? You know, we know that you know viruses and things like this are, right. are part of it. But what causes some people to be susceptible to viruses and not others? Um, and the, the ETs that I've been in communication with, um, which I would call the higher dimensional positive kind of ETs, have a tremendous knowledge of healing and, you know, what the life force energies, the subtle energy fields. Right. Uh, well, if we view things, let's say from a Hindu perspective, where their philosophy is that everything is set up on vibration, mm -hmm. that each of us has a particular, and they call them vibratory rates, I believe. Right. Um, that this in, in effect when you are able to alter that whether it be through new technologies or I've heard that also crystals are unable to do that. There will be new technologies designed to help heal the body. Um, already we have radionics instruments. Uh, some people have used crystals and different kinds of grid systems in order to affect the electromagnetic field of the body. One of the things that we've discovered is that the, the auric field or the electromagnetic energy that surrounds every human being um, has a tremendous amount to do with that person's health. Right. Uh, in some cases, more so than the organs of the body. Now, most people, from my experience, and really don't know much about history or biology. Not to sometimes they're, sometimes they're better <laughs> not, off. Not to pull stuff out of old tunes, but I agree. Sometimes they are better off. However, is the the lack of that knowledge? giving them a certain propensity for this, the sickness or the dis-ease in their own body? Well, let me say something about that because this is something that really needs to be addressed and that is that um, a, there's a, what I call a fear-based mentality and then there's what I call a more enlightened-based mentality. Um, if we don't understand something, there's a tendency to fear it. That seems to be part of what most people call human nature. Right. And so it's, it's important to become aware of some of the things which have been considered to be mysteries so that we can uh, learn to deal with our fears that are involved. Um, a lot of the so-called mysterious phenomena um, has a scientific explanation. It's just that we haven't discovered it yet with the limited instrumentation and uh, theories which have been developed by mainstream science. Uh, it's not that there's some kind of hocus-pocus necessarily going on. It, it's just a lot of people refer to it models. as the occult, and they say that with some kind of a fearful um, presentation of it. But what really is occult? O-C-C-U-L-T. Well, it depends on whether you want to get into the semantics of the meanings or not. Um, I, my definition of there, there's occult and then there's cult. Uh, occult is, is more or less, as the word suggests, it has to do with visionary, mystical kinds of experiences and knowledge which have been Maybe passed understanding down. understanding the mysteries of God or something like that. Yeah, you, that's you what could, Webster says it is. Yeah, you could use that as one definition. Um, certainly there have been mystics and occultists you know, throughout human history. Um, what we're dealing with here, um, I think, embodies uh, science, philosophy, spirituality, uh, occult practices, uh, psychology, psychiatry, every known field known to man is embraced within what we're doing here because what we're looking at is, is really a twofold phenomenon. We're looking at the existence of intelligent life uh, originating in other planets and star systems that are just as physical and real as you and me. And we're also looking at what we would call the spiritual dimension or beings into forms of intelligence that come from higher levels and dimensions which are being perceived by those on this planet who have opened up their psychic and intuitive senses. So we really, and I'm going to, in my talk, I'm going to be, you know, covering these two aspects uh, because a lot of people uh, confuse the two. I'd once had a thought that, you know, if we use, it, modern science, let's say, accepts that we use 10% of our brain. Mm -hmm. Well, what's the other 90% doing? Is it that's, there? That's a very know, good question. How do question. we activate it? What do we do with it? How do we use it? What's it for? Well, mostly science knows about the left and the right brain and that one side is more intuitive and the other side tends to be more logical and rational. Uh, a large part of the unexplored part of the brain, according to my information, is what would be called a tensor region. Um, by tensor region, what we're talking about is, is the part which is designed to communicate interdimensionally. In other words, uh, to communicate with beings perhaps from higher dimensions, perhaps um, 
other existences, parallel time frames, um, past lives, you know, information that comes from... Or just from to have a greater awareness of what's around you here in this physical world. Well, it's, it's more than just using the brain for that, though. This also involves the psychology of the self. This involves mm -hmm. being able to be aware of and being willing to look at the aspects of ourselves which have not been um, integrated, which is a favorite buzzword around here. Right. Um, this simply means that um, if there's parts of ourselves that we've denied or suppressed or had negative experiences with, that these parts will tend to color our perception so that it makes it harder for us to become aware of these other dimensions and other realities. It's not that they're very mysterious and hard to perceive, it's just that we have become so locked in and so focused on um, our own little drama, our own little trauma, as we like to call it around here, you know, our, our relationship problems, you know, sure. issues with our family, um, and this sort of thing. Anything that you can offer for the viewers that can, could give them a better scope of what's happening? Well, I think it's really important right now, in the, in the time that we're in, that people become aware of what's really happening on planet Earth right now. Um, the planet is going through a period of tremendous change and upheaval. Um, we're going to see um, the probable collapse of our present economic system within the next 10 years due to the completely out of control debt scenario, among other things. Um, we're going to see a continued expansion spiritually of people becoming aware of true spirituality, not, w not what most people find in the churches, uh, and I'm not laying a judgment on, on organized religion is, except to say that, that most people have to need to go within in order to find the truth, and most people have been looking at for outer security out there, something out there to give them the answers, rather than finding out about who are we inside, you know, what makes the self tick, you know, what We're are the aspects of the self. We're to go to our psychologist, our psychiatrist, our pastor, our priest, our, our know, therapist. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. And, and I'm again, not saying that outside of there may be a time and a place for that, for that sure. um, particularly for, for a good therapist. Um, most of us came from dysfunctional families. It's very difficult for us to tell truth from fiction. Uh, in this movement especially, uh, UFO, ET movement, uh, it's very important to um, be able to listen to your own inner guidance, to, to have a sense of what's, what's true, to be able to discern. Um, my experience is I've been very fortunate. I've met a lot of people uh, in the field who, who are very genuine, sincere, who are, who are going after the facts, who are not content to simply blindly believe everything that comes along. Uh, the truth is definitely much stranger than fiction. Um, a lot of the reports, according to my experience, are true. Uh, we definitely are being visited by intelligent life from other planets and star systems, several different races, not just one or two. Some of them are good, some of them are bad, but this is all information that we need to... And that's all relative, too. ...to discover on our own. Yes, that's a very good point. Uh, what's good to one person may not be good to another. We need to, to own our own perception of things. It's very important. And at the same time, we need to, to take our head out of the stand and realize that these things do exist. There's ample evidence, there's hard evidence to prove these things, and most of the speakers we have here this weekend are uh, highly credible people who have been researching for many, many years um, and who listen very carefully to all the reports before they draw conclusions and who verify their sources and many other 